In today's video, you're going to get to see a beautiful 1971 Plymouth GTX. Hello everybody, welcome to Classic Car Chit Chat. My name is Kevin. If this is the first time you're coming to my channel, then welcome. I really appreciate you being here today. If you've been to my channel before, then as always, welcome back. Thank you so much for the comments that you leave for me, for your thumbs up, you subscribing to my channel, and also remembering to hit that notification bell so you know when the next video is being released. Today, you're gonna to meet a gentleman. His name is Patrick, and he has a gorgeous 1971 Plymouth Satellite GTX. Back in 1971, this car was voted Car of the Year. This is actually the last 440 ever made, and Patrick actually brought this car from California to Ontario. In fact, he's definitely a Plymouth guy, and he's got a little bit of a collection going with Plymouth RT and another six-pack as well. So, without further ado, let's hop in, let's go for a drive, and let's check out this beautiful 1971 Plymouth. Okay, Patrick, before you turn it off, rev the engine. Whoa, what a beast. And can you honk the horn for me? Okay, you can turn her off now. Come on out, I wasn't sir. sure the horn was even gonna work. Well, there you go, it worked, eh? We just had the little mini test right there. Sir, what is this beauty? This is a 1971 Plymouth Satellite GTX model. It was, a satellite was the uh, US car of the year in 71. That's why it has the sticker in the windshield. Um, it was the, uh, the last 440 car available in California. Really? Um, I was looking for a a second car and uh, it was on a lot at a dealer near where I lived but he insisted on getting the full sticker price for it. So you lived in California for a while? Five years. Okay. Um, and why did you move to Canada? I have to ask you what because of I, our snow and all I the... I live in Can I was born in Canada. Oh so you came back home. Yeah this one was was bought in Canada and I drove it down there. Okay well can, we're gonna come back to that one in a second. All right. What an absolutely So I machine. finally ended up after three or four months of negotiating with this guy and having him refuse to uh, dealer swap with anybody else. And uh, uh, one, two, well, two dealers offered to bootleg a 440 in from Arizona for me, a uh, 72. Okay. But they were illegal in California by then, so. Why were they illegal? Emissions. Really? <laughs> Even back in the day? Yeah. And uh, so this was the only 440 I was going to be able to get. So I finally went to him and said, uh, you're, you're paying interest on the money that uh, uh, Chrysler says the car's worth because you didn't pay for it. They just put it on your lot. It's cost you money every month. If you want to sell it, give me a half decent price and I'll buy it. So he did and I bought it. Wow. So this is all original? Is this the way it's, the it, car it's, came it's when been you got painted. it? painted. Okay, same color though, yeah, Patrick? Yeah. yeah. And and I added the six pack. Oh, I see, okay. So you had to specialize it with your uh, with your own requirements. In terms of the front end, like the, the front lights there, are they the indicator bulbs? Yes. Wow, what a lovely design. This is a beast of a car. Well, women like it more than the blue one. I don't know why, but they do. Really? Yeah. Well, what's not to like on either of these? And we'll, well, come, back. The, the, we'll come back to this one in a second. It's more of a man's car, I think. But uh, oh, like when lovely. women see this, they prefer, like, if I have the two of them together, they prefer this one. How do you decide which one you're going to take out every now and again? It depends on the day and where I'm going and how much time I have. Uh, because I work every day, 
Okay. Uh, I don't get home until around six o'clock, so it's it's uh, easy to take this one out of the drive out of the garage and just drive it away. For sure, for sure. The other one has to be taken off the trailer. So how did you get it from California here? Did you drive it or did yeah, you get it? I drove it. You drove it. Wow. That must have been a great journey. Back in the day, I was towing a U-Haul trailer. With this thing? Yep. Oh, yeah. It's not like it doesn't well, have enough power. Well, because I decided to, to leave and uh, come back up here, so I had to put all my belongings in the trailer and drive up here. And then I left the blue one down there uh, with the intentions of going back later to get it. So hang on a second. Let, let's, let's start this one more time. So the 68 you had first. Yep. Okay, let, let's go back to this one for a sec then. So this one you bought brand new. Yeah. You're the only person who've ever driven this thing, uh, technically. Or the ownership, let's put it that yeah. way. Well, I'll, actually, the ownership isn't true either because I wasn't old enough at the time to get a loan, so my mother had to put it in her name. <laughs> it's priceless. So, what a nice mother you have to have let you do this. And this and, is your car. This is the one you got. Yeah. Wow. And I... Uh, my mother used to take it grocery shopping on Saturday mornings. That's why she got it, because she wanted it too, I'm sure. This oh, is yeah, right. extraordinary. Oh, my Lord. So did you have this while you were in school here? No, I was uh, just finished school. But I, I was working for the Bank of Commerce at the time. Okay. But I wasn't old enough to sign for a loan <laughs> for the car, so my mother had to sign. And my grandfather uh, co-signed. Wow. So brand new, back in 68, you bought this thing. And then you took her to California. Yep. You were the talk of the town, I'm sure, bringing oh, something yeah, like this, Oh, yeah, not in California. Right? That's car town. Yes, that's true. But certainly here. Uh, I ordered it without the stripe, and then uh, I, ordered, uh, I got the stripe a few years ago, and my really? neighbor put it on for me. Wow. I wanted a sleeper back in the day. So I didn't want the stripe. Okay. A lot of good that did. I know, right? I mean, just looking at it, it's hard to say. Who would actually think this is a sleeper vehicle? That's something else, though. My mother said that the uh, kids, when she went shopping, always wanted to race from the lights. <laughs> I bet. Oh, my God. Can I open this door here? Beautiful. There's something about light colored interiors that I just think is amazing. This is again the shifter and everything. Yeah, That's the four speed. Can... Wow. And that extra tack, you added that? Yeah. What a beautiful machine. So why do you have her up on the, uh, the trailer? trailer here? Yeah. So you take her around from time to time to different shows or what's the, no. what's the plan? Uh, it's on the trailer <coughs> because I have a trailer. Okay. And I have no place to park it. Ah, fair so enough. So I put it in the garage and I'm able to drive on and off the trailer when I want to use the car. I don't have anything to tow the trailer anymore. I used to have a, a camper. Right. But uh, it went by the wayside and I just haven't bothered buying another uh, okay. vehicle for uh, towing. Very cool. So let me get the story right. You bought this beauty back here in Canada in 68. Yep. Then you end up going to California. So when did you go to California? What year was that? February of 69. 69. And then you saw this GTX soon after. Well, two years. Yeah. But then why that one? And like, what? Because I took this to Lions Drag Strip every weekend. Okay. And. Uh, my brother and I uh, wanted to uh, build a couple of race cars. So I said, okay, I'll take the engine out of this, build it for a race, and I'll go get a vehicle to tow it with. Okay. So I wanted a 440 because I liked that engine. Right. And uh, I didn't want a, a smaller vehicle or a truck. Yep. So uh, I, I went looking for the 440 to uh, tow this first. thing. Okay. It ended um, up with my... I never did get the engine rebuilt. It was in the trunk. Right. And I came back to Canada, and uh, I had to go back a couple of times later to uh, pick it up. Went down oh, once to tow it back, flat tow it back, and it wouldn't, tra it wouldn't flat tow. Okay. So we went back home, and uh, 
the next year my uh, my wife and I rented a trailer and went down to get it. Got it. And uh, that was another adventure. I bet. And then while you're in California, you see this beast and you buy her. Yep. So at one point you use this one for the track, yep. more or less, yep. right? So this became your track car. Yeah. And this became your daily driver almost? Uh, yeah, it was, yeah. Amazing. And this is such a rare car, as you say, because there weren't that many of these made, I'm assuming, uh, then, were there? I can tell like? you the exact number if you want. Yes, go ahead. Now that is a proper trunk. Look at the size of this thing. What, you have the original brochures and everything? Yep. And the bill of sale? Yeah. Wow. Bill of sale. Let's have a look. Window sticker. <laughs> Hang on a second. I'm going to put this down for a minute. So what was the price? $3,687. Wow. And the actual window sticker was $4,367. Unbelievable. Look at all the options. My Lord, Patrick, they even had destination charges back in the day. Yeah, and it was built in the Los Angeles assemb assembly plant, so. It's not much of a destination, but hey. But they, uh, they do that, uh, and it's the same uh, destination charge, regardless of how far the vehicle is transported. Well, yes, somewhere true. along the line, I've misplaced the number of units that were built of this car. Okay, not to worry. It's, a, it's around 2,200. Right, okay. So what, is, what is this telling me? Sorry. So, uh, so that Paul is... Willison, Toronto. Uh, Sixty-eight. Oh, that's for the 68 RT, right on. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So that was the 3580, or 3,600 in total. 3,600? Back in the day. Yeah. That was still a lot of money, though. Well, especially since when I went in, I told them my budget was 3000 Yes. So that's in your mean. bag of goodies. Oh, look at this. Sixteen point nine. What did I say? Didn't 17. I say 17? Oh, my God. Am I good or what? Patrick, come on. I, I think I need a trophy or something for that <laughs> thing. Pretty darn close. Heck, I couldn't be much closer. I'm just impressed with myself. Hey, you know what I do want to see? The very back cover of that. Look at that. So these are all the different Plymouths. In just 71 versions, hey? Wow. How cool is that? So the satellite never came in a soft top, or did it? A so what, a convertible? Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Actually, none of them did. Oh, no, the, the Barracuda, I suppose. Well, I'm sure there are Barracuda convertibles. Yes, the Barracuda I see, the purple one on the top. Oh, right? yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But outside yeah. of that, the Fury, the satellite were all hard tops. Yep. Man, just beasts of cars, aren't they? Very cool. And the other one, the overall length is 206.6, .6, so it's longer. Yes, slightly, 17 yeah. and a bit. 17 yeah. feet, what, three inches? I'm guessing I'm making yeah. it up now. Wow. Oh, show me that picture. <clears throat> so where is that one here? That is the car... Oh, the RT, there we go, yep. Look at that. They made some cool cars, didn't they? When cars look like cars. Yeah. Not, yeah. not belly button cars, and as my could, friend and, Doug and, Ellis would and, say. And you could tell the difference from one to the other. Mm -hmm. For but sure. that's, that's the picture that sold me the car. Oh, yes. It was on the wall in the dealership when I walked in. Well, and no pretty girl beside it there, Patrick? It was for Sega Beach. Oh, fine, good enough, all right. I can, I can visualize the rest. <laughs> awesome. It was, my only option was to have a, uh, a 440 or a Hemi. And I said the Hemi has two four-barrel carburetors. 
I don't know whether I can afford gas for that because it's 33 cents a gallon. <laughs> Now it's two dollars and thirty-three cents again. <laughs> no, a liter. Oh, that's right too. Yes, yes, of course. Wow. Can we look at the engine on this thing? On this? Yes. Yeah. Let's have a look at it. I love the design elements on this thing. So really, they have no purpose other than decoration, correct? Like correct. there's no vent there. There's no, no nothing uh, really. Well, on on some models, it is. Wow. There is a vent. Patrick, she's all engine. Look at this thing. This orange color and everything would have been on the original car. Like yeah, you yeah. see, the, everything's yeah. stock, like in yeah. terms of the color. Yeah. Why, oh my. No, but the chrome... Um, the chrome covers I added. You added, right? Because the original wouldn't have had that. And no problem keeping her cool and everything else. No electric extra fan or anything. No, nope. just all. This one actually runs very well uh, as far as temperature is concerned. It's absolutely even when stunning. I was racing it. Really? Yeah. What a beautiful machine! So quite a beast of a car. What do you put in here for fuel? Just premium unleaded or regular unleaded? Uh, you got to have the premium unleaded. Yes. Uh, I don't use. Like I use Petro Canada gas, but I don't use the uh, Ultra yep. because it has uh, more alcohol in it and alcohol doesn't uh, go well in these things. Right. So, uh, and I, if I was going to go out racing, I'd probably put some octane boost in it. Yep. But uh, I haven't been out racing in years. Okay. Definitely. Can I take a look inside? Yeah. Man, look at the size of the door, even. I love all the badging and everything, too, Patrick. Did you add that, or that's no, all stock? See. Look at the seats. Again, all original. Uh, this, the driver's seat's been recovered once. <clears throat> and I added the rim blow horn. Okay. It didn't come with that. Now, no AC or anything, just your standard. No AC. And that's part of the reason that it never sold when it was on the dealer's lot. Ah, It okay. was a car in California with a black interior and no, no AC. Yeah. So not many people were interested in it. <laughs> For sure. And again, you added the tack as well. Yep. Amazing. What an absolute beauty, Patrick. Basically, you can attach can that over your shoulder and that right? plugs in yeah. as well? Yeah, there's another piece over there. Got it. I just, I've never used them. And uh, they, I, I hate when I do that. What's that, you forgot your key? No, it's oh, in it's my <laughs> pocket. <laughs> I do that too. I'm glad to see I'm not the only one. So Patrick, well, is that the original radio? Yeah. Wow. Well, actually, you know what? It isn't. The original radio was AM. Okay. But I found a, uh, a factory AM FM. Okay. So I put the uh, that radio in. Very good. What are these two knobbies here, right beside it? What are they? That's doing? to turn it on and off, and that's to switch the channel. <laughs> Beautiful. Go for it. Oh, can we turn the radio off? Sorry. Wow. So, uh, where do you... Uh, We're just going to go. We're going to go for a little drive around the block. Whatever's easier. Patrick, the engine sound on this is just sweet. Yeah. You must get a lot of looks from people. Oh, yeah. You get a lot of looks. This guy in here's got a 57 Chev. Really? Okay, I'll have to go and visit him. So what was the very first car that you bought here in Canada? I'm assuming it's the 68 RT, right? The blue one. Well, are you talking about the very first new car? Yes. It is the very first new car. Right, yes. and then 
That you, you did not use as your daily driver, I'm assuming. Yes, I did. You did, even through the winter? Yeah. So started, how was that started, experience? Started then? snow tires and all. Really? That was a... It must have been a beast to control. It was an adventure. Yeah, I bet. Like, how do you prevent it not from slipping, sliding everywhere? Not you didn't. a whole lot. <laughs> but hey, it was fun to drive, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Testing the limits every time you get in the car. Mind you, we just need a little bit of wet weather and... Uh, you could experience that too. Yeah. Hey Patrick, I just noticed you drive with two feet. I do, that's from racing. Is that right? Just force a habit, isn't it? Yep. So you said you used to race this beast as well. I did. More than the uh, 68? Oh, years and years and years. Why? Why Why this one? Well, because the other one was put back together. Ah, yes. Because the engine was in the trunk. And uh, my wife, when we uh, brought it back here, she knew a, a guy that was a, a machine shop. Okay. So we took it to him, he rebuilt the engine, I put it on a stand in my garage, and there it sat for 15 years. Okay. And finally my, uh, my wife continuously said to me, why don't you just fix one and concentrate on one and sell the other? Yes. No, 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 that's not happening. <laughs> and. Uh, we got her a, a 79 Red Express truck at one point, and okay. bought that new, and uh, we were able to use that for towing, so uh, we could take this thing to the track and race it. Wow. And uh, So which track would you take this one to? Well, I took it to Cayuga. Okay. Uh, Toronto International, but also St. Thomas. Wow, so you really do get around a little bit to and, race there. Uh, but a lot of the racing too was done in the US. Yes. Uh, we used to go to the Mopar Nationals every year down in uh, Columbus, Ohio, and a couple of other venues. Indiana we went to Indianapolis one year. But uh, I had headers on it at the time and slicks and uh, it could run consistently 12.7 seconds, wow. so I could I could win a bit. And uh, at the Mopar Nationals one year, I actually came in second overall in the racing. Good for you. So you're a little bit famous. Did you get a trophy for that at yeah. least? Oh, yeah. good. So have you always been into racing, though, Patrick? Well, I was. Oh, old. look at this thing. Oops. <laughs> yeah, he's not. No, we're all good. We're safe. Yeah, he's not coming back. We've got other things to worry about. He says, there's a stupid old fool out messing around. <laughs> <laughs> but man, what raw power of this thing. Well, you didn't see all of it. I know, but I'm sure it's there. You can feel it. I always enjoyed drag racing. Okay. Uh, I always used to say uh, it's uh, just ex just as exciting as sex, <laughs> only it lasts longer because <laughs> it takes me 12.7 seconds <laughs> and I can turn around and come right back and do it again. <laughs> just, ex just as exciting as sex, only it lasts longer because it <laughs> takes me 12.7 seconds <laughs> and I can turn around, come right back and do it again. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, Patrick, that should be on a t-shirt somewhere, don't you reckon? <laughs> oh, that was just so lovely. <laughs> That's a keeper, as they say. <laughs> wow, I'll have to remember that uh, next time. Anyway, I'll, I'll just leave it at that, but yes, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> what an absolutely lovely machine, Patrick. So your love for cars is always, like you do a lot of the work yourself from the looks I, of things. I Yes, I did. Uh, for many years I was uh, uh, I'm not, a, not a licensed mechanic, but I was a mechanic. So I, and I had a, a guy uh, where I worked who was a mechanic. Um, 
So when I bought the uh, this thing, yes, um, I used to work at a, an Esso station in McCown Road in Ellesmere. Okay. And so we were able to do lots of things there. Yeah. And uh, he taught me most of what I know. Right on. Uh, I used to call him my number two father. Yeah. And um, so we were able to uh, fix any problems that we had and. I've been able to and off you went. do, do yeah. most of my work myself. But no, that's great. You know, it's, it's good having a mentor like that just to kind of show you the ropes and sort of watch over you and kind of make sure, yeah, this is how you do it, Patrick, or no, this is a mistake. And hopefully you don't make the same mistake twice, but at least you'll learn. But just looking around your garage, oh, my God, it brings back so many memories of old school. Where the heck did you get these posters even? Uh, when I bought the RT, I... Uh, Joined a uh, Dodge Club called the Scat Pack Club. Right. And so I got all of the uh, mailings all the time. And, uh, and they would send you posters? Uh, yeah. Very cool. Uh, uh, what's this of the young lady that signed? Who's that? Miss DC87. Yeah, that was Direct Connection 1987. So it says, <coughs> to Pat, nice meeting you, love. Because she what's was at... What's her name? Marissa? Uh, Maureen. Maureen. Oh, you remember her well. How many years ago was that? In 87. 87. It's funny how you remembered her name, though, isn't it? Well, it was easy. It's right there on the poster. Yeah, I know. But other than that, Patrick, you didn't even have to glance at the poster. <coughs> Beautiful. How cool. And, and uh, there's another one signed there to me from Claudia. Again, you didn't even look at the poster and you knew her name. Well, her I, I remember. Oh, no, these, uh, these two girls at one point were... Uh, uh, at the uh, show at the International Center called the Motion Show. Okay. And I was in a club called the Mopar Performance Group. Right. And we were responsible during the show to uh, provide her, the, the, the women, security so that they could go around in the show. And oh, so you, member, you, lucky, you lucky dog providing security. I wasn't the only one. Yeah, I bet, but you. What's security. this photo here? Um, that was at a show in uh, Guelph one year, the uh, annual uh, Mopar show in Guelph. Wow. And you got both the girls on display right there. And my cousin's uh, TA beside me. Oh, really? So it's a family thing? Like a family picture? Kind of. Very cool. I forget how I got both of them there, but they're there. <laughs> one of those mysteries of life. So do you do this from time to time? Start them up just to make yep. sure they keep running? Yep. It's got to be hard just to start or not want to drive this anywhere, though, surely. Well, it is. Oh, ho, ho. Wow, Patrick. That's a symphony right there. Oh, you don't need a radio on this car. And this is actually a, a four-speed manual? Yep. Amazing. What a, and back in the day, when you bought this car, did you learn to drive on a, on a stick shift? Uh, I had learned because my mother drove a uh, Volkswagen. Okay. And uh, so I, I never had any trouble with the standard shift. Beautiful. Absolutely lovely. But we always used to worry about my mother because... Uh, this clutch weighs a ton. Really? Okay. And she was a little short woman. Okay. So we always figured she was going to get to a stoplight in one day and end up against the back window. Yeah. Because the clutch would throw her into the back. Suddenly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But she did it. Oh, yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Brings about memories for you, doesn't it, when you start her up? 
This whole place is memories. Yes, it's true. And it's my life. Yeah, and your passion and your joy makes you smile. Oh, that's your trophy. Look at this thing. My lord, priceless. Very cool, Patrick. Congratulations. See, I do have proof that I did this. No, I, 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 no, I never <laughs> doubted you for a second. That's no, no, I sure. don't mean to you. <laughs> so, Patrick, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for inviting me to your home to see your toys and the girl pictures, too. I do appreciate that. <laughs> it's not like I don't. But, uh, no, thank you. I really appreciate it. And uh, for showing your passion, your cars, and they're gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, what I can do.